These are this afternoon's top stories. Stars help raise money for St. Kitts Nevis charity. More cocaine leaving Guyana and Texans raise battle over same-sex marriage. Good afternoon and welcome to the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Today is Friday, 3rd July 2015. I am Manisha David. In national news, the stars went out to play on Thursday evening as the 2015 Hero Caribbean Premier League continues in St. Kitts and Nevis. Former international and regional cricketers, along with several influential businessmen, suited up for the CPL celebrity charity match between the Prime Minister's 11 and Sir Vivian Richards' 11 at Warner Park. The Prime Minister's 11 won the encounter by 11 runs in front of a fair sized and appreciative crowd, with West Indies women's all rounder Stephanie Taylor leading the way with 42 runs. Taylor spoke of the experience of playing alongside some of the greatest men in cricket, including Brian Lara, Sir Vivian Richards, Stuart Williams, Darren Ganga, Australian Damien Martin, and Englishman Darren Goff. I never expected that I would actually share a field with, you know, the greatest. And it was amazing and I, you know, feel, you know, feel good about myself. I mean, I've spoken to them, but, you know, I've never, you know, imagined act actually being out there and, um, it's a great feeling. The highlight of the evening was when Attorney General, the Honorable Vincent Byron, stepped up to bowl for the Prime Minister's team. Minister Byron impressed the crowd when he turned back the hands of time to grab two wickets in the match. But it was a great fun. I think it shows that the CPL can bring excitement to St. Kitts and Nevis and we have a brand to sell to the world and I think it was great fun, great fun. I, especially playing among some of the legends of the game, Sir Vivian Richards, Brian Lau um, and all the other guys. I think it was the ones, George Williams, our own George Williams from Nevis and I think that we had great fun, great camar camaraderie and I uh, and it could have, we could have had a, a, a lot more excitement, you know what I mean, if I only that give me a chance to bat. But next time. <laughs> Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Sports, the Honorable Sean Richards, said he's pleased that the proceeds will go towards an educational cause. Yes, it was a celebrity match, but more importantly for me, the proceeds of tonight's game will go towards charity, the St. Kitts Nevis Educational Foundation, that is a foundation which happens to fall under the Ministry of Education. In particular, we want to give scholarships this year to disadvantaged young persons so that persons out there who are disadvantaged will be able to benefit from this game, not just tonight, because education is something which makes a difference in one's life throughout his entire or her entire life. So that what transpired here this evening will benefit persons throughout the rest of their lives. The St. Kitts Nevis National Education Foundation is a non-profit organization that seeks to provide a deserving disadvantaged students with an opportunity to receive an excellent education. The headquarters of the Solid Waste Management Corporation has been built with fixtures to accommodate the differently abled. Project Manager Aline Edwards spoke of the amenities to be utilized by the disabled. Bathrooms, including bathrooms for the differently abled persons, and it has space provided for a future elevator, as Mr. Jenkins, I think, mentioned, and that will be installed in the next two to three weeks. Again, thinking of differently abled persons and senior citizens. Minister of Health, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, commended the designers of the building for ensuring that it is a wheelchair accessible. I met with members of the Disabled Society a few weeks ago and they were imploring me to ensure that construction of buildings in the future are friendly to them who are in wheelchairs and want to have access. And so for that, I want to congratulate those who designed this building and ensured that the disabled have access to this building. The Solid Waste Management Corporation's headquarters is now located at the Taylor's Range. 
Mark Williams, Director of Marine Resources, says his department is looking to update legislation regarding fishermen's safety by, this end, by the end of this year. We have a number of changes, I should say, a, non, a number of um, alterations to the present legislation that um, we hope to get uh, gazetted by the end of the year. Um, it would, in, it would um, cover not only our local fishing fleet, but also our high seas fishing fleet. In the meantime, Williams is urging fishers to honor the established safety regulations which have been in, in place since 1995. Fishers should be, uh, um, take all the necessary precautions to ensure that they are safe as well as their crew. William said such regulations like having safety gear aboard a fishing vessel when it leaves port should be common practice. The legislation governing fishing, fisher safety was last updated in 2002. Regionally, despite several persons already being caught trying to smuggle cocaine from Guyana, reports indicate that more cocaine is leaving the country. Enrico Wolford reports. Cocaine continues to slip in and out of Guyana, but several people are being nabbed in the process. The latest victim is Faith Joseph, who was held in New York off a Caribbean Airlines flight from Guyana. The court documents indicate that she was found with the cocaine in the sides of her purse and suitcase. She was arrested on Monday of this week. She was released on bail the same day. Still in New York, a man who is accused of smuggling over 268 kilos of cocaine and shrimp into the United States was ordered detained by Judge Robert Levy after he was unable to come up with a bail package. Heralal Sukdio was initially held with Gayatri Sukdio, but the woman was released on the same day of the man's court appearance. The matter is also being investigated at the Guyana end. And just before the Sukdios were held in the U.S. for drugs out of Guyana, over in Canada, a Guyanese woman, Samvati Mohammed, was arrested at Pearson International Airport in Toronto. The cocaine was concealed in custard powder. The weight was over 10 kilos. That, by the way, is the same amount her daughter was arrested for earlier this year when someone attempted to assist her through the VIP section of the Chedi Jagan International Airport. The daughter, Rohina Basdioram, and her boyfriend, Mahindra Ramsujit, were arrested on January 30th with cocaine in books and laptop bags. For Capital News, Enrico Wolford reports. A former Minister for National Security disagrees with the extension of top cop Vernon Francois' vacation period. The Minister is of the belief that such actions is disrespectful to the Police Commissioner and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. More details in this story. The former security minister has expressed his disappointment with the authorities for extending the police commissioner's leave once again. He says that the prime minister continues to handle the impacts report in a callous and irresponsible manner, claiming that his actions have demoralized the force enough as is. Mr. Mayer stated that Commissioner Francois needs to return to his post as a leader, earning the respect due to him by the members of the force. That cannot be good for the morale of the police force. All it is continuing to do is to cause doubt in the minds of people as to how well the police force is being managed and why is it that the commission of police is being treated in such a callous manner. We see the officers wanting to get closure to this whole issue. And the Prime Minister, in his, rep in his address to the nation, indicated that he had given the report to the DPP. It's more than two months. According to Mr. Mayers, nothing has happened since the Prime Minister's speech on the report. And he quotes, justice delayed is justice denied, unquote. He says a copy of the impacts report has yet to be delivered to the opposition, which on several occasions a request was made. The, 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 um, Commissioner of Police continuing on vacation like this. He's a human being like all of us. In a, in a very senior and important and critical position in this country. And if he can be treated that way, how is he supposed to be able to come back 
to the force with any kind of enthusiasm and command respect like his position dictates. I think this is a serious issue and we need, there needs to be closure to this issue sooner rather than later. However, he hopes that the men and women who serve this great country continue to fight and serve the people of St. Lucia. For the DBS News World, I am Jenna Ann Gastor. Internationally, a special ceremony has been held in the Tunisian resort of Sousse to remember the 38 people killed in an Islamist attack a week ago. Tunisia's prime minister, diplomats, Tunisians and the tourists gathered on the beach to pay their respects. One minute of silence was observed simultaneously in Sousse and across the UK, home to 30 of those killed. A show of unity and strength as victims of Tunisia's terror attacks are remembered a week after an Islamist gunman ran rampage on a beach. People of different faiths came together in the capital Tunis in an expression of solidarity. The ISIL militant group claimed responsibility for the bloodshed. But those leading Muslims in Tunisia want the interfaith meal, breaking the daily Ramadan fast, to represent a victory against terrorism. This is an effort to unify religions in order to achieve achieve peace in the world, he says. The event also honored family members of those killed in March's deadly Islamist terror attack at the Bardo Museum in Tunis, which claimed 21 tourist lives, including this man's mother and father. I feel sadness and resignation, and I appreciate the displays of warmth and demonstrations here in Tunis to honor my parents and the other victims murdered that day. Thirty of the 38 people killed last Friday were British, and as the bodies of those who'd left on a sunshine holiday continue to be repatriated, a minute of silence to remember the dead was being accompanied by flags flown at half-mast, including at Buckingham Palace. A county in Texas is making it hard for same-sex couples to get their marriage license after the U.S. Supreme Court ruling. CNN's Ryan Nobles spoke to a couple who has been trying for a week. This may be the epicenter in the fight over same-sex marriage. What do we want? Marriage equality! When do we want it? Now! Granbury, Texas, God a small you, town roughly 65 miles southwest of Dallas, boasts the first town Amen. square in Texas. Welcome to God's country. Amen. The town may be the last to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. It's one man and one woman. That is how marriage should be. Jim Cato and Joe Stapleton have been together for 27 years and were prepared to get married on Monday. It was their first opportunity after the Supreme Court declared gay couples have a constitutional right to marry. They want their license to read Hood County, where they live and pay taxes. But so far, the county's clerk, Katie Lang, is holding up the process. We want to be the first people in Hood County to get married. We thought we would be married on Monday, but uh, not going to happen. Lang initially said she would not issue the licenses because of her own religious objection. But then later in the week, she said she would allow other members in her office to do so. But couples like Jim and Joe have been told the proper paperwork has not arrived. But in similar small counties like San Saba, Texas, the logistical issues have been worked out, and gay couples like Jonathan Means and Jason White successfully obtained a license, while Jim and Joe continue to wait. When do, I, when do I come in your office? She said, I don't know. And everything was she didn't know. Lang's reluctance has sparked a bitter battle from both sides in this normally quiet town. Religious freedom supporters on one side of the street, gay rights activists on the other. One side defending Lang's right to object. We have a message for Katie Lang. You are not alone. Amen. Your community is here with you. The other demanding she abide by the Supreme Court's order or quit. Get on board with equality or resign today. And as many Americans come together to celebrate the country's independence, a Texas-sized battle remains over an issue the highest court thought they'd settled. In the weather, today's skies will be partly cloudy to cloudy with scattered brief passing showers. Skies tonight will be partly cloudy with brief isolated passing showers. Temperatures for today will reach a high of 81 degrees Fahrenheit, while sunset this evening will be at 6.49 p.m. and sunrise tomorrow will be at 5.41 a.m. 
That brings us to the end of the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nisha David. <laughs>